Good morning. <coughs> wow, Gollum's a little on edge this morning. You see what a good watchdog he is, though. So, those of us of a certain generation, and we'll just call this, you know, the generation that was born before the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan's show. You know, <coughs> we, uh, we were raised by parents that basically didn't want to know what was going on much in our lives. And, uh, and that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. I think that kept a lot of uh, families together. But, you know, my parents were raised in the Depression and, uh, you know, basically in that World War II generation. And that's the way, uh, that's the way people were. There were a few exceptions, of course. There were some guys who came back from the war and, you know, decided to find themselves and self-actualize and, you know, went off to, I don't know, Ivy League colleges and wrote poetry and drove across the country in cars with no air conditioning and then wrote long rambling books about it and then sold them to coffee shops or whatever. But for most of us, uh, that's the way we were raised. And uh, especially somebody like me, who's you know, the stereotypical socially repressed engineer raised by the stereotypically socially repressed mortician. Uh, that was a pretty easy and natural thing to do. But when I became a parent, I decided that, uh, you know, we weren't going to repeat the mistakes of our parents. We were going to, um, you know, communicate. And uh, so, uh, in raising my daughter, I always tried to, you know, keep an, an open dialogue and, you know, be the active listener and uh, became one of those really annoying parents that you, you talk to like at work or whatever and they say, oh, you know, I have such a great relationship with my child. We can talk about anything. Well, that's the way, that's the way I was. But, so anyway, um, so anyway, oh, uh, so they showed up last night, uh, my daughter and the and the five uh, grandkids, uh, including a, a sixth grandchild who's actually my oldest granddaughter's half sister, and who I've known since she was like three. <clears throat> so they called, uh, I don't know, one o'clock last night and said they were on the southwest side and they'd be over here in a while. And of course, we're in bed and, uh, and uh, you know, Gollum, he's, he's knocked out snoring. And of course, I can't go back to bed because I know that, uh, that they're on the way over. And, you know, I left the back gate open. I left the guest house open. I told them, you know, just... Go on up to the guest house. Um, everything's ready, but you know things are usually not that simple with my daughter. So I expected that somehow someone was going to come and wake me up. And Gollum, being the excellent watchdog that he is, um, I was afraid that my daughter, one of the grandkids, would wander into the bedroom, and then Gollum would, you know, he'd go crazy and. And, uh, and try to kill them or something. So I'm laying there, and then I I uh, hear noises, which I assume is, is them coming in, and then I, I hear the back door open, and, and Gollum is just, I mean, literally snoring. And then a few minutes later, my daughter sticks her head in the bedroom, and tells me, uh, hey, we're here, hey, the upstairs toilet's exploded, and there's water all over the floor, and blah, blah, blah. And Gollum's just <laughs> So, uh, fortunately, it was just my daughter, and not 
you know, home invasion guy or something. So anyway, uh, so I get up, and then of course now Gollum's awake, and he realizes there's somebody in the house, so he starts barking. But uh, I get up, and I grab some towels, and I, I go up to the the guest house, and uh, uh, luckily it wasn't a big deal, just this ancient toilet has a crack in it. So there's a little, just a little water on the floor, but so I'm up there cleaning it up, and I go up there, and I, I walk in to clean it up, and my daughter says, oh my God, you got so fat. When did this happen? Okay. <clears throat> and this is the same child that I you know, visit every month for like the last five years, but uh, all of a sudden it's, it, you're huge. It's like, there's like a whole other person in there. And then, and then it's, hey kids, everybody come over and see how fat Papa got. And Mia, Mia, doesn't Papa look fat? And Mia's like, mm. and then Junior, doesn't doesn't Papa look huge now? And he's like, gee, Papa. And when Jayla, don't you think Papa's fat? And uh, Jayla, Jayla's thinking, okay, on the one hand, I just been given permission to call my grandfather fat. On the other hand, there's this whole issue of birthday money coming up. So that, in her little brain, you can see those gears kind of, kind of come together and jam. So she doesn't say anything. And then uh, Ariana, look how fat Papa is. Ariana, go like this. So, uh, so that's what happens when you raise your children to feel that they can tell you anything. So, needless to say, <clears throat> excuse me, needless to say, I'll be on the bike today.